you who judge those who practice such things and yet do them yourself, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you presume on the riches of His kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that the kindness of God is meant to lead you to repentance? But because of your hard and impenitent heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself on the day of wrath, and God's righteous judgment will be revealed, and He will render to each one according to His works. Now, there's two, I've said this before, there's two types of people in this world, okay? Two types. People who sin, and people who judge people who sin, and sin. You know what I'm saying? Two type, there is two types of people in this world. That's it. The flesh. Okay? We are all mortal. We are all wrapped up with seed of the seed of Adam. Every one of us is stuck in some way. We're either sinners or we are judges who sin. There's no one righteous, not one. No one who seeks after God by natural inclination. We've all, like sheep, gone astray. We've gone our own way. We do what's right in our own eyes. We think our own thoughts. And we think that we're right before God when we're not. And then we look at other people and we make judgments. You know, <clears throat> I'll never forget. I was young uh, and I had just put out my first little CD that I made in my attic bedroom. <laughs> and uh, I was playing at a benefit concert for uh, cancer and um, this lady came in, and it's just as quick as that. Your heart just just judges someone, right? She had, uh, I, this was when I was younger, okay? Not a lot of experience, grew up in the Presbyterian Church, blah, 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 okay? She had tattoos, and, and uh, you know, her, her hair was a lot shorter. Uh, again, now I've learned my lesson, okay? But back then, my heart was like, ooh, she needs Jesus. You know what I mean? Like, just running through your mind. Do you know the only person who bought a CD from me that day? And the Lord just showed me in that moment. See, you don't, you look at the outward appearance, don't you? You judge with evil thoughts based on stuff that you don't even know. But the Lord is the one who looks at the heart. And that woman is the only one. The only one. I mean, just God did that for me. That was, that was a lesson there for me. So there's two people, okay? Those who sin and those who judge. Now, there's a way out of that, right? There's only one way out of that. And you can be someone who is set free from that cycle of sin. But we don't come with judgment. We relinquish that. Vengeance is mine, declares the Lord. We say, Lord, you be the judge. So we live before God, ourselves. And we commend ourselves only through our conscience and because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And we leave other people, we leave, their, we leave it to the Lord. Now, that doesn't mean we don't uh, know what's right and wrong, and that we don't stand up for the truth. But it does mean that we don't condemn people. Does that make sense? God takes the most unlikely people and completely changes the game. He loves to do that. And if we don't see that, we don't love it, then we're going to miss this, the kindness of God. Okay? It is the kindness of God <clears throat> that leads you, leads you to repentance. <clears throat> so, when I was looking up what kindness means, this word... Christos in the Greek, okay? It's different. It doesn't just naturally mean kindness. It means goodness, okay? It means uh, easy. Like Jesus when he said, my yoke is kind and my burden is light, okay? My yoke is easy, right? That's how we translate it, and my burden is light. But it's the same word for kindness, for goodness, okay? The, uh, the, the, the word is wrapped up in an active... Active, it's not passive. Kindness, listen, kindness is never, ever, kindness is never passive. You hear me? Kindness is active. It's always moving. It's always doing. It's always doing. Uh, it is a thoughtful intention to benefit another. A active, thoughtful intention to benefit another. To benefit someone else. You're thinking actively. I, how can I do something for someone else? And that's why we're getting these cards. My wife is getting them. Hope. Oh, do you have them? Yes. Okay, great. We can just pass them out whenever now because um, when the time comes, we're just going to come along to do it. Um, yeah, a couple of you guys can help. We'll get to that in a minute, okay? So love, 
When, when Paul writes about love, he says, he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, he says this, love is patient, love is kind. And then he tells you what love isn't after that. But love is two things. Love is two things. Love is patient and love is kindness. First, patient. Love is going to, love is going to stay the course, right? Love is going to make it count. Love is going to continue when it feels like giving up. It's going to continue. And the second thing, the substance of what love is, the substance of what love is, is kindness. Okay? And that's what we need to get in our head because love isn't something that we are dutifully bound to. Like it's not a transaction. Kindness is not a transaction. It's not something that um, if I do something for you because you deserve it, that it's my duty because I owe it to you. That's not kindness. Okay? Kindness is by nature something that is unowed. Kindness is not transactional. If I have a transactional relationship with you, it means that if you do something for me, I'll do something for you. Now, you may not realize it, but most of your relationships, even the ones that you're close to, listen to me carefully, most of your relationships are transactional. If you really think about it, if you do this for me, I will do this for you. Think about that very carefully. Okay? Not many of your relationships go beyond that, which is unfortunate. But if we really search our hearts and our minds, that's the way the flesh is organized. That's what we feel on the inside. You do this for me, and, if, and I feel really slighted, don't I? If I've done something for you, and you don't reciprocate, don't I? I feel very slighted. I feel a little bit upset inside. Um, if, if I put all this effort, I better get it back in return. That's a transaction, people. That's a transaction. That's a, I give you this, you give, that's, mo that's money, right? Jesus, didn't he say that the one who loves money, you can't love two masters, you can only love one. You either love God or you love money. You don't realize that money is not just this paper, right? Money is the transaction. That's what he's talking about. I pay for you to love me. And how many of us are living like that, like, like prostitutes? Oh, right, hit it hard, but that's what it means. When we, when we pay someone to love us, when we do something to earn somebody else's love in return, it's not really love, it's not really kindness. So that's the first thing we need to understand. Love is not a transaction. The second thing, love is not conditional. There's not a series of parameters that you have to meet or I have to meet in order to be kind. In order to have love. And the third thing is it's not compulsory. Listen to this. You are free. Absolutely free to be kind to whoever you want to be kind to. God gives you that option. You don't have to be kind. I mean you do, but we can get to that now. It's my but it's your gift. It's a gift to those you choose to give it. Your kindness is a gift you give to somebody. It's not earned. Something that you give, something that they didn't earn, that they're not owing you, that you're not owing them. So if I'm forced into kindness, it falls into the categories above. If you're forced into it, you feel like you're being forced, it's, it's falling into the transaction conditional category. It's not kindness. But this doesn't negate that you're commanded by God to be kind. <laughs> There's the paradox. You're absolutely commanded by God to be kind. Now here's the difference. This non-compulsory, follow me with this, non-compulsory commanded kindness. How is that possible? It doesn't come from ourselves, but from a deep-seated sense of gratitude for Jesus' love and His kindness towards us. That's how it works. So this is where the law, this is where the law falls short of being able to change the heart of a person. We need the Holy Spirit. See, we're, we're so based in law. We're so based in eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. That is old covenant. Now, it's right, but it's not able to change me. We need the Holy Spirit in order to fulfill what the law commands. Not for the sake of outward obedience, just doing it, but for the sake of renewing of your mind and the transformation of the heart. So listen, kindness must come from the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. See that? It comes from Him. So when He comes upon you, He fills you. You will be kind. 
you will be. You don't, you're not, when we try to modify our behavior from the outside in, it never works. You can look really good on the outside and be filled with all kinds of nonsense. God wants to transform us from the inside, so we ask, Lord, for your Holy Spirit to come in and the kindness of God comes out. That's how it works. God, you come in. Love, joy, peace, peace, kindness, faith, 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 help, talk. Comes right out. Comes right out. Maybe a little bit more, you know, <laughs> not as rushed. Now, the greatest kindness that we have ever seen and will ever see in this world was demonstrated by Jesus Christ. There's no comparison. Absolutely no comparison. And to illustrate this, I wanna, I'm going to take from the Sermon on the Mount. Now, you know in Matthew, the Sermon on the Mount, how Jesus just goes from thing to thing to thing. And when you look at the Sermon on the Mount on the surface, you think, wow, these are a whole bunch of things I need to do. But let me tell you something. A servant is not greater than his master. And what I mean by that is everything that Jesus asks you to do, everything that Jesus asks you to be, He is. So when we read the Sermon on the Mount, as we're going to do, I'm, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm going to, okay, we're going to just go through it. It's like four chapters, but we are not time to read it all. But if you do, I want you to read it with this in mind, okay? Jesus is for in spirit, okay? Jesus is one who mourns. He is me. Jesus hungers and thirsts for righteousness. He's merciful. Jesus is pure in heart. He is a peacemaker. He is the salt of the earth, the light of the world. He has come to fulfill the law. He does not hate his brother. He will be faithful to his beloved. He will never divorce his wife. His yes is yes. He will turn the other cheek. He'll give you the shirt off of his back. He will go the extra mile. He will always give to the one who begs him and will not refuse the one who wishes to borrow from him. If you don't have chills by this point, I don't know how to help you here. This is him. When I read this and I read through this the first time, I thought to myself, it says if he's standing there with me, I'm just now starting to get a little bit of a picture for Jesus. Because so much of the time, so much of the world's perceptions and the way our minds work, we have a false view of Jesus. This is true. This is Him. He loves His enemies. And He prays for those who persecute Him. He loves those who do not love Him back. He greets those who do not greet Him. He is perfect as His Heavenly Father is perfect. He doesn't practice His righteousness to be seen by men. He gives to the needy without letting anyone else know. You ever wonder why you don't hear about all these incredible things that God's doing all the time? Now, it's our part to learn about those and to, and to go find them out. But God doesn't have to boast. He doesn't practice His righteousness so that everybody will go, wow, look at that. He doesn't have an ego. He prays to God not to be seen or heard by men. His treasures are in heaven. His eyes are healthy and his whole body is full of light. He is undivided in the master he serves. He's devoted to God and despises money. He was never anxious about his life, but he sought first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He did not come to judge others, but came to bear the judgment of all who believed on him. He always does unto others as he desires them to do unto him. He is the narrow gate and the hard way that leads to life. He always does the will of his Father in heaven. He is the rock upon whom all that hear and obey his words will have a trustworthy and a secure foundation. That's the whole Sermon on the Mount. We just went through the whole thing. And you can see from that, Jesus is all of those things. That's a beautiful picture of God's kindness. Imagine a person who's, here, you don't have a shirt? Here's mine. Yeah, I'll walk with you that extra mile. I'll, I'll do that extra thing that, that maybe I don't have time for, but I'm going to make time for it. See, God doesn't leave us without an example. He has given us the best example of kindness. Romans 8.32 says this. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? And he was 
storehouses of heaven are open and God is desiring to pour it out on you. Because he loves you. Because he is kind. He loves his enemies and he prays for those who persecute him. Don't you remember Paul? Saul on the road to Damascus. Why do you think he repented? Why do you think that his eyes were open? Jesus was praying for him. Saul, why do you persecute me? Why do you hurt me? And here he is praying for his enemy. There was no more of an enemy in his day than Saul was. And Jesus loved him. And changed his life just like that. Knocked him off his horse. And that's the love of God. And that's what the love of God can do in people in your life. Knock them right off their horse. When you show kindness in a world that is so cruel. That's where the power of God comes from. It's right there. Right in that moment. Changes everything. And that's what God desires to do in this world. God doesn't care about all these frilly things. He cares about you. He cares about people. He wants to love them. He wants you to love them. He's helping you learn. He's teaching you. He's teaching me. So what we're going to do, you got a card here, you got a pen. What I want you to do, I want you to write ten things. Ten things. Ten acts of kindness, okay? Ten acts of kindness on that card. And when you're done, I want you to write all those things. When you're done, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do next, okay? If you don't have one, raise your hand. Okay, we need some over here. The next cards and pens. your hand, keep it up so she can see it. Yeah. She's got a baby, she's coming, she's coming. Yeah, ten, ten acts of kindness. Just write, just think, just use your brain. Think about things that would benefit somebody else. Okay, put those down, write those down. One through ten. Think real hard. <clears throat> Just random acts of kindness. Take it seriously. Put it down. When you're done, you put your finger on your mouth. I'll just get it up and You need some ideas. Think about things you might do for your neighbors. Think about things you could do for this community. Think about things you might do for your family. People at work. Ten acts of kindness. Something that would just brighten somebody's day. Just could change everything for them. It could be really simple. It doesn't have to be super extravagant. So you say hi to a stranger. Say, give a compliment to somebody who, who you see in, in, in the supermarket.
one more minute here. Okay, um, now what I want you to do, finish up what you're writing there, I want you to take your card and I want you to trade it with someone else. <laughs> I want you to take that card, I want you to trade it with someone, someone else, someone that maybe you know, maybe you don't know. And I want you, when you receive the card that you get, I want you, I want you to choose. Now the reason I did this is because I really wanted you to take it seriously, so be good. Um, I want you to give somebody else, I want you to choose three things on the card that you receive. Three things on the card that you receive. And I want you, listen, I want you to commit to doing those three things this week, if it's possible. I want you to do those three, three things this week. It's just three things, okay? This is gonna, hopefully, number one, hopefully number one, it got you thinking. You had to write down 10 things, hopefully it got you thinking. Number two, you got somebody else's ideas sitting in front of you. Maybe some of those lined up with what you were thinking, and you can choose those things. So maybe it got you thinking some more about those things. But I want you to commit to three things on that card that you get. You can trade with somebody else, okay? Three things this week I want you to commit to. I want to demonstrate acts of kindness in this community, and I want us to demonstrate the acts of kindness. God, is, this is what God does. Like, how often does God think about you? He says, the thoughts that are for you are more than the grains of sand on the seashore. That's how much God thinks about you. So, if that's how God thinks about you, you could take three things, three thoughts for someone else this week, okay? That's my, that's, that's our practical application for this message today. That's what I want you to do. That's what I want you to go home with, okay? Now, I'm probably gonna, yeah, we're gonna pray. This is going to conclude today. I, have a, I, 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 got, um, I got to about 0.4 out of 10. Is that right? I don't know. What the, four, out of ten, four tenths of this message is completed. Um, and I'm going to continue it next week. But if the band can come on up, I just want to pray. And let's ask the Holy Spirit to do something this week through you in somebody else's life, okay? Let's pray. God, as we have... Um, taken these thoughts in about your kindness, that it's not transactional, that it's a gift that we give to somebody else. I pray we would give a gift of our kindness to someone else this week, Lord, to do for someone what they don't deserve and what costs us. The same way, Lord, that your kindness towards us is demonstrated in Jesus Christ who gave himself for us on the cross. Lord, I pray that as we make this practical, that it would transform our heart and that we would desire to do this more, to be kinder, to be more thoughtful about other people besides ourselves. Thank you for blessing us, Lord, and we desire to bless others. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Stand up. Let's sing about the goodness of God.
by his blood and has made us a kingdom priest to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen.